Hey, good morning. It's Paige Browning. It's Wednesday. This is Seattle Now. Housing and homelessness are by far among the biggest issues the city's facing right now. You might have heard of Compassion Seattle. It's a campaign to change how Seattle approaches homelessness. And right now, it's up in the air if it will be on the ballot in November. Seattle Times reporter Scott Greenstone joins us today to explain what's going on. But first, let's get you caught up. The end of the war in Afghanistan is bringing new concerns about veterans and their mental health. Calls to the crisis line run by the Department of Veterans Affairs have increased since the fall of Kabul earlier this month. Now, Senator Maria Cantwell is getting involved. She and a group of senators want the VA to create a new mental health program for veterans who served in Afghanistan. They want the department to reach out to people directly and connect them with mental health programs, specifically ones aimed at preventing suicide. Police watchdogs say a fatal shooting in 2019 could have been avoided if the King County Sheriff's Department had put suggested reforms in place. Anthony Chilcott was wanted for stealing a truck with a pet poodle inside. Two plainclothes deputies in an unmarked car found him in the town of Black Diamond and rammed their car into the one he was driving. One of those officers was later fired. The Office of Law Enforcement Oversight says there was no threat when the officers first came upon Chilcott and the deputies escalated the situation without cause. The sheriff's office disputed some findings, but overall agreed with the report's conclusions. And there's been a little change at the Washington State Fair, which starts Friday. Masks are now required inside and outside. The event's going on as normal otherwise. They've got the famous Budweiser Clydesdales, funnel cake, a pie crust baking demonstration. But there's this. Hospital leaders wish we'd stay home. The Washington State Hospital Association is advising everyone to avoid large events, including the state fair, to slow COVID spread. There's one topic, one phrase, one ballot measure that's been driving a lot of the talk around Seattle's elections this year, Compassion Seattle. But there's been a recent twist in that conversation. So to get the lowdown, Seattle Times staff reporter Scott Greenstone, who covers homelessness, is here now. Hey, Scott. Hey, thanks for having me. So, Scott, this measure called Compassion Seattle was going to be on the ballot. And then it died. A judge struck it down, saying basically that it was too far reaching. But now I'm hearing it might get a second chance. What's going on? What's the latest? Yeah. So on Friday, a King County Superior Court judge ruled in a really interesting ruling that even though she liked the ballot initiative as a voter, as a judge, she had to strike it down because it did too much for a charter amendment, which is essentially like a an amendment to Seattle's uh, version of the Constitution, its bedrock document. She said that the law doesn't allow you to do this much with a charter amendment. And on Friday, Compassion Seattle, the campaign that's behind this charter amendment, said, you know what, we're not going to appeal. We don't have enough time. And on Tuesday, they decided that they actually were going to appeal at the last minute and ask the Washington Court of Appeals to let them put Compassion Seattle on the November ballot and then decide the legality of it after voters have a chance to vote on it. So if Compassion Seattle does end up on a ballot in the future and if it passes, if voters pass it, what would it do, remind us? Yeah, It would kind of change the way we address homelessness, but it's not super clear how. Essentially, it would order the city council and the mayor to fund and set up 2,000 new units of emergency shelter or homeless housing. And then after that, develop policies and procedures, is what the Charter Amendment said, to keep parks and sidewalks clear of homeless encampments. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, create housing. On the other hand, keep parks and sidewalks clear. And at the same time, it would have the city kind of rewrite its budget and spend its first dollar on homelessness um, rather than, as many people would say right now, its last dollar. Um, And it would essentially kind of force the mayor and the city council to approach it a little bit differently. The thing is, 
it is kind of vague in its wording and the next mayor and city council could kind of approach it in a number of different ways. I, I want to ask about the next mayor. We have Bruce Harrell and Lorena Gonzalez running for Seattle mayor. You've reported that Compassion Seattle, whether or not it appears on the ballot, will impact or in some ways influence the mayor's race. How so? Yeah. Bruce Harrell and Lorena Gonzalez are similar on the surface in many ways. Yeah. They both have been on Seattle City Council for years. Bruce Harrell was city council president before he retired a few years ago. And Lorena currently is uh, yeah. city council president. Um, so this provides, I think, a wedge issue between them. Compassion Seattle, I think it's architects hope that it will be code for, I want to do something, I want to do something drastic. And so Bruce Harrell can say, look, I support... Compassion Seattle, which he has said he does, it, it can be used as code for, I'm not going to uphold the status quo, but Lorena Gonzalez, my opponent, will. And, you know, in his defense, I interviewed Lorena Gonzalez months ago and talked to her about homelessness and her homelessness strategy, and it was fairly more of same. She essentially said, well, I've been working on this, I've been putting more and more money into Mm -hmm. uh, homelessness along with the rest of the council for the last few years and we just need more housing and we just need more money for shelter etc compassion seattle allows bruce harrell to say i'm going to do something different even though he may not be able to point to his record and say that especially around homelessness and it also gives lorena gonzalez a little bit of a boogeyman by saying, look, Bruce is supported by the architects of Compassion Seattle, mm -hmm. the downtown businesses, the chambers of commerce, etc. So even if this measure is not on the ballot, we could find out this week what happens in courts. It's, it's been bouncing around. Even if it's not on the ballot, you see this as framing what differentiates our two mayoral candidates. I think it does. Even if Compassion Seattle passes, there is a question of how the next mayor will implement it. Because that wow. wording about keeping parks and sidewalks clear of encampments comes with a caveat where it says in the Charter Amendment, balancing the health and safety of the people who are in those encampments. So if Lorena were elected, she could say, well, to balance the health and safety of the people in these encampments, I actually need to not do any encampment removals until we have enough housing for everybody, which could take a while. She could mm -hmm. use it potentially to suspend camp removals entirely. Um, mm -hmm. Bruce could use it if he's elected because he does support it. He could use it to ramp up encampment removals or mm -hmm. encampment removals could stay at the pace that they are currently right now, which they are ramping up in this kind of um, tail end of the pandemic. You report on homelessness. What are you hearing from people experiencing homelessness about this measure, about Compassion Seattle? I talked to Harold Odom, who is living in a tiny house village in Georgetown. He's also very involved uh, organizing other homeless folks. Mm. He, he has come out strongly against the measure. In fact, he was going to vote for Bruce Harrell and told me that he thinks that Lorena Gonzalez's uh, track record on homeless is not very impressive at all. Hmm. But that when Bruce Harrell came out for Compassion Seattle, Harold told me he knew he couldn't vote for him because he believes Compassion Seattle wow. is an excuse to sweep homeless encampments. What else are you watching for as these ideas are battled out in the election and this week battled out in the court? One of the reasons the judge on Friday ruled that Compassion Seattle shouldn't go up on the ballot mm. is because of this thing called the King County Regional Homelessness Authority. And it, it, uh, it sounds like just another layer of government, and in a way yeah. it is, but it represents this idea that for the last few years, Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin, the King County Executive, and both the city and county councils have been moving toward this bigger idea. And the idea is you know what? Seattle can't go this alone. A lot of the people living in Seattle's shelters became homeless in other parts of the county where rent is going up, especially South King County. I'm not mm. going to say the majority, but a good chunk of them. 
And Seattle is the one that has all the shelters, so most or, or most of the shelters, so many homeless folks come here. The King County Regional Homelessness Authority is designed to try and spread that support throughout the region. And so if you become homeless in Bellevue, you can potentially go to a youth shelter in Bellevue or a women's shelter in Bellevue or a yeah. men's shelter in Bellevue, which does currently exist. This is one of the reasons that the judge actually struck Compassion Seattle down is because it was in a way countervening that decision that, hey, we're not gonna have one city like Seattle go it alone. Mm. The region mm. has to work on this together. Mm. And I'll be interested to see what candidates say, hey, look, you know what? I know that I'm going to be the mayor of Seattle or on city council, but I actually don't, I can't fix this problem alone. We need to work with the King County Regional Homelessness Authority. We need to get the state to fund behavioral health much better. And I'm going to lobby and do that. Uh, right now, underfunding at the state level for our behavioral health system has made it so that drug treatment is incredibly hard to get for homeless folks. And mental health beds are, they went offline at startling rates last year because of COVID. So I'll be interested to see the candidate that says, look, I can't fix all these problems, but here's what I'm going to do instead. A lot to watch, and we'll know in the coming days whether this is going to be on the ballot or approved for a future ballot. Scott Greenstone, Seattle Times staff reporter, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to Seattle Now. Caroline Chamberlain Gomez produced today's show. Our production team is Claire McGrain, Jenny Cecil Moore, Diana O'Pong, Matt Martin, and Jason Pagano. Matt Jorgensen does our theme music. I'm Paige Browning. See you tomorrow.